All right, so we're going to talk about uh, DNA transcription and translation. So I'm going to kind of have this little drawing right here. If you follow along on the key, I have right here this thing right here. That is a double-stranded piece of DNA. Now, I've also drawn that little black thing there that's actually not supposed to be a straight line. It's actually supposed to be a circle, and you can see it's dividing the right side of the stream is all going to be nucleus. The left side of the stream is all going to be cytoplasm. So that tells you what part of the cell we're actually looking at. Now I have my strand of DNA and I'm also adding in a strand of RNA and you will notice that the RNA is both inside the nucleus and exiting out to the cytoplasm. Now uh, out in the cytoplasm it is encountering that brown thing which if you follow the key is the uh, ribosome and I have it exiting through here, I forgot to label it, uh, that is the nuclear pore, that is the hole, the door that it exits the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm. Now, uh, you can see I'm adding in all the lines. These represent all the nucleotide bases that's going to go in the RNA. And here I am labeling on the right side strands of DNA. You'll notice it's only A's, T's, C's, and G's. Now, when you do this on yours, it really doesn't matter what you do on one side of it. It's just any random collection of A's, T's, C's, and G's. Obviously, in your body, it matters for the sequence. But for here, just go with that. Now, you'll notice that I'm also adding stuff in on the right side. This, however, is not random. Wherever I have an A, that's going to be opposite of a T. Wherever I have a G, it's going to be opposite of a C. I'm only using A's, T's, G's, and C's because we're only looking at DNA right there. Now, when it comes in here, I'm starting to add in my RNA nucleotides. Again, these are not entirely random because the U has to be opposite A, kind of hard to see there. But C opposite G, G opposite C, A opposite T, G opposite C, G opposite C. And here I have an A, and remember that would normally partner with the T, but I'm looking at, in that case, a U. Sorry, that's kind of hard to see there. So I have an A on the DNA that's going to partner with a U, a uracil, on the RNA. And the rest of these are kind of random. But each and every single one of those lines does represent an RNA nucleotide. So I'm filling those in. Those ones I have in the ribosome are actually uh, kind of specific. These ones here I was a little bit careful with, and you'll see why in just a minute. Everything else is pretty much uh, somewhat random. Now, adding it up there, uh, the enzyme, of course, RNA polymerase. Remember, that's the one that converts the information in DNA into an RNA copy. Now I'm adding in these scissors to represent kind of what's called a spliceosome. Remember these are the parts that actually cut out RNA. Now there are parts of it that they're going to cut out and you can see there's a couple pieces of RNA that are floating free inside the nucleus. Now these ones here are actually called the introns. Remember introns are like intruders so you want to get rid of them. Now the ones that are still inside uh, that have not been removed, those are called exons, and think of them as excellent. So these are both pieces of RNA. The introns are intruders, so the scissors cut them out. The exons remain because they are excellent. Now we're going to jump back out and take a look at the cytoplasm. I've added in four things here. These are tRNAs. And on the bottom right here, if you remember, that is the anticodon. That's going to pair up down here with a codon. And you'll see that each tRNA has attached to it a different amino acid. Methionine, phenylalanine, valine, alanine. There'd be you know, a bunch more that are out in the cytoplasm, but these are the only ones I'm going to show right now. Now we're going to take a look at this first one here, the methionine. You'll notice that the UAC anticodon right here is going to partner perfectly with the AUG codon. So this codon can only pair with that one, which means this is the only tRNA that can enter. Next up, uh, if you take a look, my next sequence is UUU. Now the only thing that can pair opposite of that would be AAA. So that codon UUU has to pair with the anticodon AAA. So this means that this is the only one that can come in and bind to the next one. And you'll see that's exactly what happens. The AAA comes down and meets up with it, and that's the only one that could fit in there. Now you'll take a look. Those two amino acids have been joined through what's called a peptide bond. So it's linking those two there. Now let's take a look at the next one. I got a little ahead of myself there. The GUC anti or sorry, GUC codon can only pair opposite of a C, A, G, which is exactly what you'll see on this 
anticodon there. So that's the only one that can come in and bind. And it does, and you form another peptide bond between those. Now, once I have these three all in there, I no longer need this tRNA. It's like a taxi driver. It dropped off its passenger, and it doesn't need to stick around anymore. So in this case right here, here, that tRNA is going to leave, go back out into the cytoplasm. Now the next one right here, UGA, you'd think that there's supposed to be another one come in. But UGA, if you look it up, is actually a stop codon, which means that there's nothing that can partner with that, which means we're done here. So in this case right here, now that I know I have a stop codon, that tRNA can be released, and the next tRNA can also be released, meaning this protein is done. So that's going to flow free into the cytoplasm. And I'm going to put in another one up top there. You can see that is another protein up there. This one is already completed, just like this one here. It was joined one part at a time until you get all of that, um, all those amino acids joined together, floating free in the cytoplasm. So I started with the information over here in DNA. It got turned into this RNA copy that went out into the cytoplasm, to the ribosome, and the ribosome took those tRNAs, and remember there was an individual one for each one, they partnered up, they brought their amino acid, and they all joined together to make a protein. This is how the information in DNA gets turned into a protein.